Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another 1-6 scale Hot Toys figure unboxing and review video. Now as you can see, we're doing things a little bit differently today because unfortunately, or maybe I should say fortunately, this box is so incredibly large that I couldn't have it rotating in the light box. We've had to do a bit of a different setup in order to get this entire thing in frame. It is absolutely enormous because of course this is none other than the Alfred, Bruce Wayne and Batman Armory. I guess you could say three pack. There's three figures plus a really awesome diorama piece inside this box. Now before we begin, I do want to say a huge thank you to Bob Dylan, one of my amazing Justin's Collection Plus channel members, and of course a subscriber to the channel. He actually gifted this to me, and honestly, I couldn't be more grateful, so show Bob Dylan some love down in the comments below. Now this pack has always been on my radar, but the price has been incredibly high. Now since they announced the DX19, this is slowly starting to come down, but it's still relatively pricey because of course you are getting three figures in the pack here, a bunch of accessories. Now as you can see for the box art, it's fairly straightforward. We will be doing the intro and of course the unboxing in the very same segment. We may as well, we've already got the box here. Batman Armory along the top and you do have Batman Armory on the side and some relevant legal information on the back. This box is huge, so you'll have to forgive me if the unboxing experience isn't as smooth as it usually would be on the channel, because of course there is a lot of stuff to contend with here. This is not only a very big pack, but also a really darn incredibly heavy one as well, because as I said, there is a diorama style piece being the armory itself in the background. Now there have been some rumours because of course Hot Toys did show that sort of translucent acrylic style armory in the background for some of the DX19 pictures. Does that mean they're going to be potentially making the armory from the Dark Knight Rises? Who knows? But for me personally, I'm more than happy to have this piece in the collection. I've literally just gone ahead and re-watched The Dark Knight in preparation for this unboxing. And yeah, I'm feeling it. These three look absolutely awesome. We may as well start off with Alfred Pennyworth himself. Now these being older figures, you will start to notice some signs of age, such as the yellowing around the collar there. There's not much you can do about it other than removing the shirt and potentially bleaching it. It's the glue that they've used in the fabric that's starting to yellow over time. Next up, we do have Bruce Wayne himself. Apparently this was an Armani suit that he wore in the film. That's what they're trying to replicate. And yes, I did see him wearing this exact suit in a couple of scenes in The Dark Knight. But I'm glad, finally, to have a Bruce Wayne figure. So these awesome head sculpts that we often do get with Batman releases don't go to waste. Now, of course, in the DX12 unboxing and review, you already saw the absolutely fantastic newly engineered mouth plates that came with the Armory version of Batman. They're far superior. I don't know why they went with those ones that they did for the DX12, but these look absolutely awesome. So yes, you do get a full-on Batman figure with this particular version of the Armory. In fact, I'm pretty sure you get a Batman with all of the versions of the Armory. It's just the Alfred and the Bruce Wayne that you miss out on. Now, as you can see, there is the Armory itself and a bunch of other stuff. So what we are gonna do now is get the accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look and everything he comes with. And here we have all of the bits and pieces that come in the Armory set. Now as you can see, he comes with a ton of accessories. Batman, of course, on the right here. And for Bruce Wayne and Alfred, it's a little bit more slim. But we'll talk about that stuff in just a second. Let's focus on the real meat of the set being the Batman accessories. I honestly had no idea how many teeny tiny little bits and pieces were going to be coming in the set itself. As you can see, it's a veritable treasure trove of accessories. If there was something you saw Batman interacting with in the movie, nine times out of ten, this set is going to have it. You can see that he comes with not one, but three different grappling guns, which is insane. One sticky bomb gun 
in this tree and a bunch of other bits and pieces. Two interchangeable utility belts, a couple of the versions of the drill itself, little pouches, batarangs and various other bits and pieces. And yes, all of this stuff is functional. You can take it out and use it and pose your Batman with it. That's insane, you even got some bat nunchucks down here with a real metal chain. This is just the first tray. He also comes with this one right here. Comes with a couple of different versions of the mines, both the small non-expanded ones and the expanded out ones. Couple more batarangs, little canisters, and various bits and pieces compartments as well. The final tray includes the back halves of the utility belts and four more sticky bomb guns, just for good measure. These little hooks will actually be used to attach the sticky bomb guns to the cage, which you'll see in just a second, a couple more clips, and these other bits and pieces which are used in conjunction with the bat suit to have it on display rather than it actually be Batman himself. Now unfortunately, they didn't make any improvements whatsoever on the cape. It's still this absolutely horrid cardboard, really stiff feeling material. If you want to do your Batman figure justice, just ditch this cape. It's really that bad. Now in order to have that empty bat suit look, you do have of course an empty cowl. It's really nicely sculpted. It looks exactly like it's supposed to. You can see you literally just remove the neck itself. This is not really meant to articulate, but you could technically remove the empty cowl if you do want to have your Bruce Wayne posed just with the cowl itself. That is a really nice touch. Now you do get a couple of different mouth plates, as you can see right here, a couple of different variations of the Bale talking and then more angry. Look, it gets angrier as you go down there. These are really nice. They're the best Dark Knight face plates that personally I've ever seen. I think the Armory set finally did nail the look of Bale's version of Batman. Now you can see he does come with these two little pieces right here. This one of course is the neck collar in case you wanted to detach the Bruce Wayne head sculpt then pop it on Batman. You can also use this piece which is basically a replacement section for the head sculpt because the one that comes on it on the end of the neck is skin colored which would make it not really match as well, not blend as nicely with the suit itself. So they've gone with a black one here. You have to remove it and pry it off the Bruce Wayne head sculpt. It's a little bit difficult to do, but it's something you can definitely get done. Now, the reason I have two fists off to the side here is because this one is Bruce Wayne's and this one is Alfred's. I just want to quickly talk about how sort of disappointed I am with the hands. They're identical between the two, save for the paint applications, Alfred's being slightly darker. Hot Toys usually excels with the wrinkles and skin texture and details on the older folks' hands, but they didn't do it this time. They're just the exact same mold between the two, just painted slightly darker. Slightly disappointing, but then again, for a set of this vintage, I can definitely forgive it. Now, the set also comes with a coat that Alfred can either hold or wear. It's a nice velvet style material, fairly basic, and it pretty much does what you'd expect it to do. The only other stuff aside from the figures themselves that come in the set, as I struggle to reach off camera here, are the display bases. Literally just says the Dark Knight, Alfred Pennyworth, and the other one says Bruce Wayne. The typical Hot Toys style display bases, fairly darn basic. And of course, the biggest accessory that comes in the set is the armory itself. This piece is absolutely gorgeous. It does open from both sides, but let's talk about the paint and the texture first. Just take a look at the top here. It's really nice and visceral. It feels like a proper concrete block, and I honestly love the way it looks. It's sculpted and painted really darn nicely, and around the back here you can see there is a screw. This is a battery compartment. You can actually light up the armory itself if you do prize open the doors. On the inside you can see a couple of lights up the top there. Unfortunately I have popped in some AA batteries and mine doesn't light up. I don't know if that's just because of the age of the piece, the wiring has started to decay. I don't exactly know why that's the case. I will try and get it working, but I honestly don't think for this review at least it's going to be possible. Now you can see there are these little compartments, these little drawers, which can slide out. They of course house all of the accessories. They're all nice and encased in foam when you do push them in there, so they will be perfectly safe. But honestly, 
the sort of nice part about having this piece is just the size of it. It's a chonky boy, and it can sit in the background with your Bruce Wayne and Alfred and mimic that look of the Batcave. I really love the way this piece looks. Now, for this, you also do get a display base, which is quite a surprise. A big, honkin' Dark Knight-style display base. You can pop the armory on the inside there. It's relatively lightweight. It's just a piece of plastic, of course, but it does keep that piece nice and in place, nice and secure, so it won't be toppling over. What we are gonna do now is start to bring the figures themselves out here and take a closer look. And here we have them standing straight up and down the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I have to say, the way this review is gonna work is gonna be slightly different. We're gonna take a look at Alfred, then Bruce Wayne, and then instead of taking a look at Batman, because technically we already have in the DX12 review and we have included the armory head sculpt, we're not gonna do that. If you wanna see Batman just on his own as a figure, go and check out the DX12 review but we will be taking a look at the fully completed armory just after we've taken a look at these two figures. I hope that does make sense. Now I have to say, having these two standing here in front of me, I really like the way they look. They're not perfect by any means, but for back in the day, they are really nice representations of Alfred and Bruce Wayne. They're gonna be really nice additions to the Nolanverse shelf. Now that I finally got back into collecting the figures, I'm really glad to have these set. A huge thank you again to Bob Dylan for hooking me up with this set. What we are gonna do now though is take Alfred off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. There's something unfortunate about the way the light hits this head sculpt in the light box. It kind of gives him this sort of blind look, this glassy eyed look, but trust me, in person it looks absolutely exceptional. Let's be honest, the head sculpt had to do the talking here. The outfit's just a basic black three-piece suit. They really had to get the likeness on point, and I think they have. I can see Michael Caine, aka Alfred, 100% in this sculpt. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. But I'm loving the paint applications and I'm loving the wrinkle and textural detail on the face itself. It looks absolutely sublime. Hot Toys did nail it. Now as for the outfit, it's pretty basic. It's literally just a black jacket, black vest, black pants, and a red tie with a white shirt. It's a super simple three-piece suit, but they have padded him out to give him that sort of more elderly stature, and I think that really does work for this figure. Usually we try and remove fat suits, but for this guy, I do think it works quite nicely. The pants are slightly baggier, which I do think works for Alfred, but more on that in just a second. I'm super impressed though with as simple as the outfit is, that head sculpt is absolutely, in my opinion, one of their best. And here we have him up close and personal. And just like Alfred, the head sculpt itself kind of does most of the talking here. And I'm pleased to report it's exceptional. It was in the DX12 and it is here as well. It's Christian Bale through and through. I'm loving the way this looks. Now, Dean Knight has mentioned a couple of times that the eye color is slightly off. I'll have to take his word for it. In my opinion, it looks good, but Dean Knight is 110% the expert on all things the Nolan verse. Now, let's talk about the outfit. With Alfred, I was perfectly fine with it. It was just a regular suit. But for Bruce here, the tailoring is slightly baggy. This does actually show its signs of age in the suit itself. For Bruce, it should have been a really nice tight cut, but unfortunately, it's a little bit too baggy, especially down here for the feet. You can see that it doesn't really break evenly, kind of bunches up, and let's be honest, a person of Bruce Wayne's stature wouldn't be wearing a suit that doesn't break nicely over his shoes themselves. And speaking of shoes, they kind of look like dad shoes. They're a little bit big and chunky. I don't really think they are on point, but they are at least sculpted and done to an exceptionally high standard. But as I said, a little bit too chunky. Overall though, that head sculpt really does sell it as being Bruce Wayne. You can pose away some of the other inconsistencies, have the jacket tucked behind as his hand is in his pocket. You can definitely make it work. But for me personally, I would have liked a little bit tighter of a cut 
on the suit itself. Now, just quickly before we move on, I wanted to show you the armory fully assembled. You can see every single little piece that I had to manually place in, but honestly, it's well worth it. When you have this thing fully assembled with all of the accessories placed in their appropriate compartments, it just comes to life. I love the way this thing looks. Don't worry, later on in the video, actually at the conclusion segment, you will see what this looks like with Batman placed inside. Because once you do, honestly, you're going to have a tough time deciding whether or not you have your Batman on display as the actual vigilante himself or in the armory because either way, he looks really darn awesome. Just going over articulation on Bruce Wayne here. Now this will be the articulation segment for Bruce and for Alfred. They're on the exact same style of body, which means their joints will be moving in the exact same way. Now starting off with the head sculpt first, it is on a fixed neck, which means you are getting a slightly hindered range of motion, but as you can see, that's more than enough, at least for me personally. The arms themselves go out to about there, they go forward, pretty much the full way. They are wearing all fabric, so that's pretty much to be expected. You do have a butterfly joint, a swivel at the upper bicep, double bend for the elbow, and a regular hot toy style joint for the wrist itself. Now for the torso, you do have a swivel and a crunch forward and back, plus pivot side to side. The legs go out to about there, they go forward pretty much the full way, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend for the knee, and of course a regular 1 6 scale style ball joint for the foot itself. Now for a quick side by side comparison, here we have a group shot of everyone that has been reviewed so far. Yes, there are a couple more still coming to the channel, including some third party offerings, but for now, this was the most recent batch of figures that I've reviewed from the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises. They all are fantastic. I love every single one of them. There are a couple of flaws here and there, granted, but for the most part, they are some really fantastic releases. Some of Hot Toys best. I didn't quite know what to think going into this. I've owned some in the past, some I'd never even seen in person, but now I'm pretty much happy to say that if anyone asked me if they should pick up any of these figures, I would unequivocally say, absolutely, go for it. These are some truly awesome pieces. Just wrapping up on the Armory set, based off its appearance in The Dark Knight. Now, going into this, I really didn't know what to expect in terms of how it would all fit together, how it would look with the Batman figure inside, and of course, how the two civilian versions of Bruce Wayne and Alfred would look standing alongside it. And now, seeing it all in front of me, fully assembled, I have to say, honestly, I love the way this thing looks. Of course I was going to. There are so many accessories, and they are all individually removable, and they all can be used with the Batman figure. Plus, you can have the suit on display, you can have Bruce Wayne inside the suit, you can have Alfred helping him set up, or, you know, looking at some gear. There are so many possibilities with this set, and I think that's honestly the key. That's why people like this set so much, is the fact that there is a lot of modularity here. I personally do own the DX12, you've already seen a review of it on the channel, so therefore I can now use the accessories that come with this set, and even some that come with the DX12, to put in the armory, plus have the updated head sculpt for my Batman figure, and still have one in the armory display. It's a win-win. If you are thinking about picking up this set specifically for the Batman, you may be a little bit long in the tooth in terms of when the DX910 comes out. It's going to be a superior release. However, it's not coming with anywhere near as much stuff as what comes in this particular set. Plus, you're not going to be getting the Bruce Wayne and the Alfred figures. Also, when you do get your DX19, you can take that new Christian Bale head sculpt, pop it on this Bruce Wayne figure, and I reckon it's going to look even better. So that's going to be a nice upgrade for this set. Honestly, if you were thinking about picking up the DX12 on its own, I would say that's a bit more of a harder sell. Shy away from that. But if you're thinking about picking up the Armory, absolutely go for it. I don't see them reissuing this in terms of how it looks in The Dark Knight anytime soon. We may get the clear Perspex one from The Dark Knight Rises, but even that's a bit of a gamble. Even if they announced it 
today, it would be at least two years before it comes out. So you'd have a pretty empty shelf. You can get this, use the civilian figures, then part it out and just upgrade the armory section. That is definitely something you could do. But either way, no matter which way you go, if you get the Batman and the armory or you do get the Bruce Wayne and Alfred figures, I think you're gonna be pretty darn happy because I personally definitely am. Now I have to say a huge thank you once again to Bob Dylan, one of my amazing Justin's Collection Plus channel members for hooking me up with this set. It was an amazing gift. Huge thank you goes out to him. Show him some love down in the comments below. Now, as I said in the intro, I do believe you can pick this up from Toys Wonderland. I think it's in stock right now. You'll have to check the link in the description below just to find out, but it will be pricey. It's an older set. It's a little bit harder to find. Therefore, the aftermarket price does tend to rise. So don't be surprised if this is a bit of a pricey set when you hit up that link down below. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.